Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world watching the Giro d'Italia today. It begins to unfold in earnest as we leave Turin behind us and head out for a flat stage to 179 kilometers from Stupinigi to Novara. This is a very, very flat stage, just one little bump of a climb, a category four climb, other than that, pan flat and very exposed roads. Yeah, especially when we managed to drive the last 15 k's as we headed towards our hotel. We rode a little bit of the end of the stage today. Yeah, very, very exposed indeed through the, uh, the rice fields um, yeah and if the wind was going to blow or did blow even a little bit it could prove to be pretty critical on the run into line because as you can see there's several little uh, changes of direction um, as we head and loop around the town and into Navarra but yeah the wind pretty much benign looking out from our commentary point at the moment not much at all just been through the first of the two intermediate sprints and then the second. Uh, one after another they come in the final 40 kilometres. The second of the intermediate sprints of Vercelli carries bonus seconds of 3, 2 and 1 as well. We'll explain all that as the stage unfolds. So it's an all-Italian trio of uh, wildcard teams. All-Italian teams, three Italian riders. Stage two of the Giro d'Italia. That's the breakaway, and that is a pretty standard formula, it has to be said. Confirmation of who we've got then. Filippo Tagliani, who, as you already noted, is actually a, a, a young rider from Androni Giocattoli. Round the corner, so Albanese has to try and break free, hold his speed. Tagliani's on his wheel, we know he's a fast finisher, but Albanese, ah, does he get there? Yes, he does. Aha, well, credit to him. I think Albanese deserved that win. He was on the front the whole way up the climb. Albanese dropping back to the team car. What have we got here? Rear wheel puncture, possibly front wheel puncture by the looks of it. Or is it a rear wheel? No, it's a rear wheel. So the rear wheel being unscrewed, disc brakes necessitating a slightly slower change. These two riders should just ease off now. Well, in theory, and it is only a theory, the rider sitting on the wheel of his... Uh, Breakaway companion should be the faster of the two, the Androni man. I think so. Tagliani on a flat. Uh, well, has Marengo got something special? Will he go long on this one? With a bunch of coming bearing down pretty quickly now on them. 1.7 kilometers or thereabouts. Kobe Rosens brings the peloton of the Giro d'Italia to within about five or six bike lengths of the last remainders of the breakaway. And now the gap is closed and the breakaway has been caught and the peloton has come back together again. Terrifying speeds here and down they go through underneath that little tunnel as uh, uh, Bora Hansgrohe have the front of the race now. Where's Peter Sagan? He's just drifting around. A little, little bump from Peter Sagan as he uh, makes contact with Giacomo Nizzolo. All the sprinters then looking at that uh, at the wheel of Elio Viviani who's right towards the fore as uh, Gaviria now hits the front. 0.6 kilometers, another little left-hander, a right-hander. Here's where you have to pick the right-hand side. And, and it's, uh, it's Consorni on the front now. Molano on his one. Elia Viviani in, in second, but in third place. And it looks like it is, uh, well, uh, Gaviria in fourth wheel at the moment. And uh, Melia moving up the outside. Melia biding his time. He's on the wheel of Gaviria. And here goes Elia Viviani. Little flick there. Viviani being let out. He's on the wheel of Gaviria. There's Melia. Uh, Melia crossing, closing the gap. He's got Nizzolo on his wheel. Nizzolo, Viviani, Grunewagen. Perfectly placed. Grunewagen, has he got the power? Grunewagen in third wheel. Just now he's, no, he's left it too late. Melia wins. It's Nitolo in second place. Grunewagen will have to wait for that victory. He picks up third, but Tim Malia from Appleton Phoenix in his first ever Giro participation, his first Grand Tour, takes the win. It was fast, furious, and it was chaotic, but a triumph for Appleton Phoenix and their Belgian sprinter. Well, it was simultaneously the simplest thing and the hardest thing to do, wasn't it? The simple thing was to take that right-hand line, that inside line. The hardest thing to do was to do it, if you see what I mean. We all knew what they had to do, but getting it right on the day, well, it was the difference between winning and losing, wasn't it? I'm really happy, <laughs> really proud of it. <laughs> Can you take us through the last, uh, let's say, 600 meters? How yeah. important was it to be well positioned after the last uh, curve? Yeah, I know uh, it was a roundabout, really important in the end. And yeah, well, when I saw it, uh, I know already I'm in a good position. And we come out and uh, I was only thinking uh, we need to uh, faster, faster, faster. And then Alex, yeah, 
did a great lead out, bring me in perfect position and yeah, I go from uh, far I think to 50 meters, but yeah, in the end it was enough. So uh, yeah, big victory. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy. It was uh, an altitude camp together with my girlfriend, and uh, there I prepared myself to for here, and uh, yeah, it pays off today.